Is Monday morning a struggle to get out of bed into the swing of things? Well, don't worry, you are not alone. Join us for thought-provoking, stimulating, and mindful conversations on higher learning with Zelda Speaks for your Monday morning mindfulness session on Blog Talk Radio, The Female Solution, Mondays, 7.30 until 9 a.m. Be sure and send your ideas, thoughts, comments, and suggestions. Also, if you'd like to be a guest on the show, visit zeldaspeaks.com and send us your info. We'd love to have you. Experience mindfulness moments with the mindfulness slash stress relief coach, Zelda Speaks. And thanks for sharing the mindfulness moment tip of the day. Stay on purpose, stay empowered, and stay tuned to your next session of mindfulness on higher learning with Zelda Speaks. Make it a mindful day. And thanks for listening. Grand Rising, this is another great day. Welcome to another Monday morning with Higher Learning with Zelda Speaks. And today, we'll be paying tribute to Bill Hampton, a man who has kept the legacy of his brother, Chairman Fred Hampton of the Black Panther Party. This is quite a legacy because these were a group of young men who made a difference, all of them under 30, in founding this party, politicizing a nation of African-American people with the realization that they had the power to make a change and the right to defend themselves against abuse. The Black Panther Party has been often misunderstood But their impact continues to this day. And so we'll hear more about that as we join our host, Zelda Speaks, and hear more about the history of the Black Panther Party and the man who kept that legacy after the tragic assassination of Fred Hampton and Mark Clark back in the day on a cold December morning in the 60s, ambushed by Chicago police. This, of course, is one of the stories that is difficult to recall. It's difficult to comprehend such brutality. But it's important to learn from the past, and it's important for us to teach our young people so that they are clear what has happened and they are clear about their responsibility to keep this legacy alive. It's always refreshing to see young people become active because young people are the engine which which drives our nation and we see today a lot of that same spirit in the current Black Lives Matter movement many young people that are misunderstood and yet their spirit is the same in demanding change and demanding an end to the brutality perpetrated upon them in the name of law enforcement. This is something that has to end in our nation, this misuse of justice, and it can only end when we admit that it's what it is. Yes, enforcing law is a dangerous job, but it's only a dangerous job because we have a society that is equal and corrupt, and it's withholding of resources that people need for survival. So one wrong creates another. And then you have the bullying spirit of those who are given the task of enforcing law and order. And when one is oneself suffering from low self-esteem, it's very easy to evolve into a bully that abuses people simply because the government backs you up. 
the Black Panther Party were strong young men made up of fearless young men who decided they were going to protect the rights of those who were being brutalized by police and a criminal justice system. And they looked at the Constitution and realized they had a right to bear arms. And so they went through the process of getting weapons legally. And when someone was being intimidated by police, threatened with being physically abused, they pulled up with their weapons drawn and saying, we're just protecting our citizens' rights. Well, this was frightening for those in law enforcement to have their authority challenged. And this began the waging of the campaign to destroy the image of the Black Panther Party. I remember growing up as a child in the 60s and hearing about the Black Panthers, and there was kind of a a confusion as to the role and the intention. Somehow it got sort of all mixed up with the Blackstone Rangers, the Black Panthers, and you know, you had, you know, the gangs and the killings and, and in the mind of a child, they all mesh together until my sister begins to study the Black Panthers. And she was, you know, about four years older than myself. And so she would bring home the papers and, 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 the, and I think they even developed a coloring book, <laughs> very creative young men. And they also, developed a free breakfast program, which the public schools model their program after to this day, because they realized that much of our our low achievement had to do with low income and not being able to provide breakfast. And when a child goes to school hungry, it's very difficult to concentrate. So they begin to feed people. And I want to make this point. People can understand what happens when people are brutalized and denied their just due in terms of basic necessities of life, when the cash flow is routed around their community and they are bereft of stores that provide good, healthy food, they are given jobs that pay wages too low to be able to maintain a home. In a general state of suffering, people become angry. And when an organization reaches out to them and supplies their needs, that organization gets support and becomes heroes. So there was a conflicting point of view when it came to what the Black Panthers stood for. Were they a street gang? Were they dangerous? Should we fear them? Or were they heroes that came to the aid of the people providing for their needs and protecting their rights and teaching them how to stand up for their rights? Were they a political party that was organizing and backing candidates Or were they a group of thugs? So you had conflicting points of view as to what their role was in the community. And some of the elders that were frightened because the Black Panthers had a method that was revolutionary and being confrontative was something that many elder Black people were not used to doing. They were not used to questioning the authority of whites, and they certainly were not used to drawing guns, except for those who had been in the military. That did, in fact, appeal to them, standing up for your rights, being willing to fight back when someone abuses you. So these were very challenging times in the 60s, and the emergence of the Black Panthers signaled a change in philosophy from the civil rights era. The civil rights workers were nonviolent and 
trained to take a beating without hitting back. And the whole philosophy of nonviolence was, in fact, to draw out the violence in the other person and make it clear who was in the wrong. Yes, that took courage. And the idea was that the ultimate conscience of a human being would be aroused and having to see themselves as the perpetrator of violence because the other party was not fighting back. Well, in a sense, that worked for those watching the beatings, and, and we remember the, um, the Selma march. We remember the uh, Pettus Bridge incident, and we remember a lot of public displays of violence with the dogs and Bull Connor and South. And it moved some whites to empathize with the protesters. Others, it just aroused them to more anger. So that method didn't always protect life. Sometimes it only exacerbated conflict and brought out an even stronger bullying spirit in those whose brutality was being backed up by a police force. So with the Black Panthers came a feeling of strength and power. So without compromise and without apology, one's human right to defend oneself against brutal treatment, against those who our taxpayers, our tax dollars were paying to protect us. It was a way to expose the hypocrisy of America and its criminal justice system that was really just a means of maintaining the same slave system on which this country was founded. So the Black Panthers did a lot of educating, and they were relentless in their attack of police officers who really had become an occupying army in the black community. They developed coloring books, and I remember those coloring books. They were in direct opposition to the officer-friendly coloring books, that said, you know, the police are your friend. Well, the Black Panther coloring books called the police pigs. So this was was quite a difference when it came down to how we saw the Black Panthers. And as a child at that time, I remember growing up in a neighborhood where we had police officers. I think I told this story before. I don't want to sound like, you know, person aging and retelling stories again. But for those who didn't hear before, you know, we had we had police officers in our neighborhood. And I remember my father, he, he told me this story. You know, a group of the men in the neighborhood were sitting around talking about how some of the young men were unruly and how sometimes they, they had to arrest them and, a couple of the police officers were kind of bragging about how there was a, there were a, a riot, I guess, at this. Because there were a lot of, you know, racially motivated confrontations at that time. This was, again, the 60s. And so they had been called to, to squash an incident. And... You know, one of the officers was kind of bragging about, yeah, I had to take that boy and go upside his head, you know, because they had the, the clubs in there, you know, they called Billy Clubs. They would pop you upside the head. So then the other one was yeah, I had another one. I had to go upside his head. Uh, and so they're all laughing and the men sitting around, you know, having a beer and everything. And my father just kind of said quietly, uh, say, I got a question. When you all go to the white community, do you all ever go upside any of those white boys' heads? Of course, all the black police police officers, they just got real quiet. And so the point my father was making was that they had, in their blindness, 
gotten involved in that whole police culture of brutality of young black men. But they were not transferring that same brutal treatment to young white men. So in a real sense, that same oppression on our people in the name of law and order. We have that same struggle today with many of our officers. Yes, there is crime. Yes, there is violence. Yes, it's difficult when you get called to the scene of a crime and the people involved are young people. And, of course, every, every mother feels like her little baby would never do anything wrong. And there's a frustration that comes with, parents not realizing that their child has become a menace. That, that is a reality that our officers face. But there's also a conditioning that comes with entering the police force. And if you're conditioned to see certain people as dangerous, if you're conditioned to see young black males as criminals who must be suppressed, it doesn't matter whether you're a black male or female. It doesn't matter if you're a white female. If you've already been conditioned to see those particular kind of people as the enemy, then you are a danger to them because the dangers you're more likely to overreact with violence, and we see this happening every day. So the Black Lives Movement in many ways has carried on the legacy of the Black Panther Party and raising awareness of this twisted thinking that does not maintain law and order, it actually exacerbates the distrust. And in in many ways, it's the police who will initiate and instigate a conflict. So we're going to take some calls before we hear from our host at 730. And we want you to participate in this conversation of Higher Learning with Zelda Speaks as we pay tribute to Bill Hampton, who has recently made his transition. And he, with his works, his books, and his lectures, have preserved the history of the Black Panther Party movement for future generations. Let's go to our caller at 872. Thank you for joining us. Give us your name, where you're calling from, and your comments. Uh, Good morning. This is uh, Eric Kufi James, Chicago. Yes, sir. You're finally Good getting it. Good morning Oh, thank you. Thank you. You know, we're finally getting it now. Now we're realizing these organizations that seem to pop up and speak for you and speak for us have been antagonizing, creating racial tension. All of them. Can you All- create racial tension if, if, the, if tension didn't already exist? That's where attention comes from. They have created these organizations. See, the, the bag is out. Now, whether or not we get this information or not, people still got to do a little research. But I've researched every organization, okay? Did they ever knock on your door and say, oh, Naima, can I represent you? They all of a sudden pop up on the scene, okay? Now, that was, that's what Black Lives Matters did. And when they came out, you know what I was saying? Don't follow them. I said black economics matter. Don't, don't follow them because I don't know them. And now we're lo- reviewing them. Now they're looking at them as a terrorist organization. Okay, so I was right about that. Okay, I'm, I, see, I'm, I'm not fooled. That's why, you know, some black people don't, you know, are, are, they're a little bitter when I talk because, I, I, you know, I let people know who's, who's doing what to us, and I shut them down. Let me ask you this question. Uh, I how, how old is your son now? Let me ask you this question. How, how old is your son now? He's a, he's a teen. Okay. So if your son uh, coming home from school, if you got a call that your son coming home from school was accosted by an officer who maybe asked him, well, what are you doing, and then accused him of participating in some crime somewhere and, and took him down to the police station and beat him and tried to beat him into confessing to a crime that he knew nothing about, what would be your response? Well, first thing, that's not going to happen because I'm out here creating an environment for my son to live. That's why I'm doing it. I'm, I'm, I'm creating an environment. So I got a police officer as a neighbor, okay? So I'm, police officer is not my enemy, but the media can make it your enemy, okay? They can create a story and, 
all the police, all if they can do anything they want to do and manipulate the people's mind because we have been on low frequency eating the wrong food, believing everything we hear. Now we're eating better. Now we're saying, wait a minute. All these stories are contracting me, and, it, and it's coming from our own people. Black people yes, are involved in on this. Black people are involved in on this. They do it. It's a systematic game. They come out here, they divide people, and the next thing you know, they're the ones getting paid, and we're saying, where's all the money going? But and it's in a few people's have, hands because they came out here. You have avoided the question, though. You have avoided I said it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I don't talk like it's, that. I don't talk statistically about my about my. I don't own. talk. Now you can say somebody and, else, and child. People, I don't talk that about. I don't put. I don't put. I don't talk like that. I'm sorry. I can't use my my but children. It has happened. You you are denying okay. those if it who it happen to, to the right to respond by acting like it doesn't happen just because it. Let me tell you as a. Let me tell you as a man, okay, how I think about that as a man. Now, that's the question, how I think about that situation happening. It's not going to happen as long as we have fathers in our son's life. Those situations are not going to happen because you know what? A police officer is going to think secondly about putting his hands on a young boy that he knows that boy got a father in his life, okay? We don't have that, Naima. So we don't have that protection. So these people can do anything they want to do with our children, knowing there's no backlash. That's why I'm out here saying, put the fathers back in the children's lives so we can stop all that. Well, that's See, what the as a man did, as men. They stood up as men, and, and, and they stood up because other men were bullying people and hiding behind law enforcement. See, people can do things right or wrong, with the position that they have, the and black. if you're being protected by a position of trust and you in your own heart are corrupt, then you can get away with a lot of corrupted behavior. So when, at what point do men decide they're going to organize and come together and stand against those who are abusing the authority that our tax dollars have given them? We don't and always when they do that, do we understand Everybody. that? Yeah, everybody always want us to come together. Everybody always want us to come together because of a fictitious situation. The Black Lives Panther, what they did for uh, for the community and for the United States, they brought lunch. They brought lunch programs for all the schools. They carry guns because yes, they they're did. like, look, we want to take flight. They carry guns for protection because we wanted to yes, they did. Uh, uh, control. They they brought the lunch program, Naima. That's not guns. There's no guns behind that. There's no hating behind that. That's trying to do something positive for your children. And we couldn't eat back then at that time. They had us so low. We was walking around with signs saying, "I'm a man." Now you see our. Now you see the the how they dummy us down back in the '60s. I look back at that and like, what? You had men walking the streets saying, "I'm a man." That's how low life we were thinking. I would never because walk around and say I'm a man. You know what I'm saying? Boys. They were called boys. Hey, okay. Boy. You were, oh, so the sign that's... was a contradiction to that practice of calling grown men boys. Okay. They are, look, people are going to always try to create division. Always going to try to. When somebody come up to me and say, go back to Africa, I go, well, America. A white guy told me the other day on the internet. I think you guys should go back to Africa. I go, I can't. I got 200 acres of land here for my native Indian heritage roots. He couldn't say nothing no more. Now let's talk about you. Maybe you should go back to where you come from because I'm already here. So you need to make a decision about your life. My decision has already been made by my family. Okay? We did not say those type of things, Naeem, in the 60s because we didn't think we were from, we thought we were from Africa, a lot of us. You see? So if you can blind and take the truth of someone, you can dummy them down. You can treat them any way you want to treat them. And then this is where we this is where we at today. And we're so now let me ask you this it. question. Let me ask you this question because this is this is this is the ongoing debate regarding the the nonviolent movement and then movements like the Black Panthers in which it was realized that there's a real physical threat coming from people who had no remorse about it. How do you deal with brutality coming from people who, no matter how many lawsuits you file or how many, many marches you have, they have no remorse of, of perpetuating violence against you. And so you end up 
with dead children that we don't want to think about, but dead children who were minding their own business, brutalized by people who are giving the excuse that they're teaching law and order. What do you do when they choose not to stop brutalizing you, no matter how nice and peaceful your demonstrations have been? What is the next step? That's when you unite. You bring a spiritual uh, unification amongst the people. You start living better. You start telling the men on each block, protect your block. Watch out for the police. Wave at the police. Let them know that we're watching them. Okay? And you build up a unified force and let the police know that's not where this it's not happening like that. I'm sorry. Well, you we just got described our, what we, the we, Black Panthers did. You just described what the Black Panthers did. But hey, yeah, sometimes you have to take force because it's it's happening on a on an ongoing basis. And, you know, they were just enjoying killing us. You have to take stands like that every now and then. But, you know, it doesn't have to be where we go at war with these people, where, where black people are saying, we gotta, we're going at war. I said, no, 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 no. <laughs> Don't do that. We're just trying to protect your neighborhood. We're trying to protect your families. Look at it like that. We're not at war with anyone, okay? We're just very, very uh, intelligent people. We're very, very powerful people that have been used, our talent, our ideas, our inventions have all been taken away from us because we're blessed people. We're trying to get to a point where we can get some of those people through and be blessed because we have a system that's controlling us, okay, stopping us from, from uh, starting businesses, stopping us from getting into the music industry, stopping us from doing the things that we want to do. We saw that. So now we, we can create this, another environment saying, you know what, you need to own it. I was telling a sister the other day, 17 years old, she's 18, working at uh, Walgreens, and I was telling her I'm in the music business. She said, well, why are you, why are you not out there? I said, I, I control my own. I, I, I'm signed with my own production company. Why you don't let people do that? I said, because they'll manipulate you. I have to do what they tell me to do all the time. She goes, well, I'm not going to be an actress anymore. I'm not going to try to be an actress. I said, I said, no, you can be an actress, but guess what? Act in your own movie. That light went on in her head real quick. I was like, wow, she got it. She goes, thank you, sir. See, so isn't she wasn't trying. Then, isn't, isn't what it's huh? all about then, independent thinking? This is what that you're saying, that you have come to the realization that we have to think independently, that we have to think in terms of self-control, that we have to create our own structures. Isn't that what you were teaching her and what you're living yourself? That's sovereignty. We had a government Absolutely. here when it showed up. We, we have sovereignty. We have our own government. I'm, I'm my own government within myself. <laughs> well, I'm you know, sovereign. that's, that's exactly you know, the, that's, the philosophy that's that the Black Panthers had. We need to have our own. Well, we got to take a break. Not not right, need to have it. We already have it. It's already here. So See, then what we look need like, to do to is recognize and recognize respect it. what we have created. Yes. Therefore, we Thank give you. it authority. Thank you. Well, we thank you so much for your call and, and right. kicking off this conversation. We're going to take a break. Thank you, Brother Coop. You're always stimulating. We'll be right back with our dear sister, Zelda Speaks, as we pay tribute to a giant of a man who has kept alive the legacy of his brother of the Black Panther Party, who has made an impact in this society, and of course, Bill Hampton's recent transition gives us an opportunity to look back and honor him for the work he has done with his book and his lectures that have preserved the history of this Black Panther Party movement for future generations. And we'll be right back after this quick break. So we want you to stay with us. Grand rising to you and yours, and thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us on Blog Talk Radio, The Female Solution, Higher Learning with Zelda Speaks. Thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to make a difference in your life, in the lives of your family, and in the lives of your community. And today's show is dedicated to a family, not just a man, but a legacy of a family. 
that has made a difference and will continue to make a difference. And that man and that family is Brother Bill Hampton, chairman of the Fred Hampton Foundation, in which many Chicagoans know that Fred Hampton was assassinated. He was murdered, as a matter of fact, by the Chicago police. And there is a book entitled The Assassination of Fred Hampton, How the FBI and the Chicago Police Murdered a Black Panther, by author Jeffrey Haas, who wrote the book in collaboration with others. And I was blessed with the opportunity to meet him and not only meet him but interview him and go a little in-depth about that horrendous activity that happened in Chicago right here. And our show is dedicated to the memory of Brother Bill Hampton and the Hampton family today. And if you are joining us online or if you're calling in, the it will be tight today, but we'll handle it. The request line is 515-605-9325 and press 1. When you're ready to speak, that's 515-605-9325. And I have a little trivia for you today. If you can tell me what year was Brother Fred Hampton assassinated in, we've got a little gift for you this morning on mindfulness, uh, the Mindfulness Breakthrough System, Four Easy Steps to Mindfulness, which is what we will get into very shortly. We always do a five-minute relaxation meditation to start the day, but we always start with the word. And since this week is the beginning of a holiday that is celebrated as a day of love, but I strongly suggest that you do your homework and realize what Valentine's Day really is all about. But in the meantime, I will share with you from my uh, second book, Inspirational Conversations. Uh, There is noise in the background. I'm not sure who that is, but whoever you are, please mute it. Thank you so much. As we continue, I will read from Inspirational Conversations, 365 Days of Empowerment, Uh, Happy Nurture Yourself Day. That's for Valentine's Day. I don't call it Valentine's Day. I say Nurture Yourself Day. Happy Nurture Yourself Day. Today and every day is one of the best days of your love life. Live it as if it were your last. Don't wait on the roses, dinner, the party, the candy, or the call. Love your own self today by doing the things you want someone else to do to, for, and with you. If you can't be happy by or with yourself, what makes you think he, she, or it will make it any better? True love doesn't come wrapped bathed, or clothed in anything. True love will pour from your being like an age-old wine waiting for the cork to pop. Today, pop your own cork. Love yourself as no one else can because nobody knows better than you how to love you. Hug and tell yourself, I love you. Happy Nurture Yourself Day. Now kiss yourself and hug yourself. That's Inspirational Conversations with Shalom with Israel, a.k.a. Zelda Speaks. And thank you for allowing Zelda Speaks to speak with you this morning. As I speak with you now, I ask you to just spend the next three minutes with me breathing very deeply and breathing as we begin to breathe, close your eyes and think on this. As you inhale deeply, take a long, deep breath and feel your chest inflate, hold it for a second, and release it. And continue to breathe to the count of five to yourself. Close your eyes, 
There's nothing in your hands. There's nothing distracting you. And remember this, that breathing activates messages to the cells to activate the hormones and for the messengers in your body to do their job. How awesome is that? Thank you, Dr. Vieta. The show that comes on Monday, excuse me, Friday morning on the Female Solution Health and Wellness with Vieta. And that is what I learned from her. So just keep that in mind as you continue to breathe in and breathe out. Knowing that every breath you take, that breath is activating messages to the cells to activate the hormones and the messengers in your body to do their job so that you can continue to breathe in and breathe out. And for every breath that you breathe in, breathing in all the good that awaits you this day, it is activating messages to your heart, to your liver, to your lung, to your pancreas, to your spleen, to the spine, to the esophagus, to the stomach, to the colon. Inhale deeply. And as you exhale, release all negativity, all thoughts of doubt, lack, and fear. And know that whatever is going on in your life is only here to teach us lessons. Some lessons that we may not want to learn, but the lessons show up anyway to offer us the opportunity to build character. These are character-building days. Inhale deeply. And exhale as you give thanks for the breath of life. Because someone somewhere is unable to breathe on their own, if they are able to breathe at all. I give thanks as I breathe in for the last time for this exercise. Inhale deeply. And exhale. Giving thanks. And the last time that you breathe in, just one more long deep breath. Inhale deeply. And as you exhale, the air is being released from your stomach. Bend your head forward and then slightly around to the left and slowly around to the back. Slow down. You may be moving a little too fast. Your neck should just be reaching the back. And then slowly over to the right-hand side and slowly, slowly, slowly around to the front. Take one more long deep breath and inhale and give thanks. And if you're joining us online this morning, we'd love to hear from you with this dedication. We hope that you've enjoyed the morning meditation, and we hope that you will share it with a loved one, with a coworker, with a family member, with someone who is having a challenge today because we live in a world where there is so much chaos. We need something very quickly to harness the negative energy that comes in our direction. And breathing is always the answer. So when someone comes to you to attack you, stop and take a long, deep breath and breathe on them if you have to. And breathe as many times as you possibly can. And let us continue the show as we open up the line today, 515-605-9325. If you would like to comment today on how Brother Bill Hampton or the Hampton family has made a difference in the quality of your life, please do so. I was blessed with the opportunity to meet 
Brother Bill Hampton, I think it was in the early 80s, late 70s, early 80s, I can't remember. I was at a function. I was working in secular radio at the time, and someone pointed him out to me and said, this is somebody you need to have uh, speak um, on the podium. And, of course, I did. I didn't, I'd didn't. i heard of a Bill, a Fred Hampton, but I didn't know he had a brother. And after he spoke, he invited me out to the house. They were having an event for Brother uh, Fred Hampton at the uh, the Fred Hampton Scholarship Foundation and which Bill was in charge of. And he invited me out to meet his mom, uh, Mrs. Iberia Hampton, who made her transition last year, or was it the year before? And then his sister, Deborah, made her transition last year, and now Bill makes his transition this year. But when I went to the Hampton family house, his mother... Mrs. Iberia Hampton was so warm and loving. She just adopted me right there, then and there on the spot. She says, you're my goddaughter. You come back here and see me anytime, girl. So it was like Bill just then became my automatic big brother. And it was such a warm and loving environment, and and she began to tell me stories and and how this came to be. And I can just go on and on, but I won't because we've got guests on the line. But if you do not have this book, The Assassination of Fred Hampton, How the FBI and the Chicago Police Murdered a Black Panther by Jeffrey Haas, H-A-A-S, you have got to get this book. The former United States Attorney General Ramsey Clark says this is an extremely important book and a tale well told for America to read if it wants to become what it says it has always been, the land of the free and the home of the brave. Elaine Brown, author and former chairman of the Black Panther Party, says, at once journalist, lawyer, and storyteller, Jeffrey Haas manages to sear into every page of this book a compassion seemingly forgotten, providing a riveting eyewitness account of the government assassination of Fred Hampton. This is mandatory reading for those who love and believe in freedom. And last but not least, a chilling account, essential reading. Kathleen Cleaver from the Emory University School of Law, former communications secretary of the Black Panther Party. And do not let me forget about Fred Hampton's mother, Miss Iberia Hampton, who says people should not forget that state's attorney, Hanrahan, the Chicago police, and the FBI murdered my son. Who knows what he might have become if they had not killed him. Well, they may have killed his body, but they did not kill his spirit, and I have his colleagues and friends on the line, that would be Dr. Quincy, along with Cy Bounds, who have known him long before I did. And thank you for showing up this morning, Cy and Dr. Quincy, for sharing the legacy of the Hampton family this morning. Grand rising to you, and thank you for joining us on The Female Solution, Higher Learning with Zelda Speaks. Thank you so much. Grand Rising. Yes, thank you for having us this morning. How are you? I'm wonderful, and thank you for joining us this morning. Tell us, how is it that you became to know Bill, and how did you get involved with the Hampton Family Foundation? When when I finished undergraduate school, I started working for International Harvester Corporation, which I believe is now Navistar, and Mm -hmm. that was where his sister, Dee Dee, worked. And Mm -hmm. Zelda, she she told me, um, you need to meet my brother Bill. You need to meet my brother Bill. And Mm -hmm. at the time, of course, I thought nothing of it. I didn't think anything of it. And she kept saying it because she worked with me. And so she said, because the two of you are so much alike, if you ever meet, you'll bond instantly. I think maybe a few months later, 
I was awarded the Fred Hampton Scholarship Fund Image Award, and of course, Bill presented the award. And just as she predicted, we met and instantly bonded. And I was adopted by mom, much like you were the same mm-hmm. day. And once you were in with the Hampton family, you just never really get out. You're just no. in. <laughs> just amazing, amazing family of servants, people who simply dedicated themselves to equal rights, human rights, and the betterment of mankind. Just a phenomenal family. I don't know any other way to put it. You talk about the first family of freedom. My God. (laughs) They (laughs) have sacrificed so much. Exactly. Exactly. Um, You know, so many comments stand out, but I was talking to his nephew, Bernard, who's doing an outstanding job with arrangements and the like and putting everything together and I'll be contacting you as soon as final arrangements are made since thing, everything happened so suddenly. And then we had, a, you know, the, ho- the uh, weekend with the blizzard and the like. But um, I was talking to him about Bill, and I said, how well did you know him? And he said, well, we knew him, but most of the time he wasn't around. And what it reminded me of was Dr. King's children ultimately said the same thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, they knew their father, and they knew he was a loving man, but – Married to the movement. And when you're married mm-hmm. to the movement, much of your time is on the road. You're on the go. Mm-hmm. You have no choice. Yeah. And so that that's how I got to know him. And, again, we, we bonded in a, in a bond, actually, I suppose, tighter than Brothers All Things Considered. And mm-hmm. that being the case, his loss, of course, is an immense, immense loss. Now, Dr. Quincy, I know who you are, but many of our callers may not know who you are, so I'm, I apologize for failing to introduce oh, you. Right. But just tell us a little bit about your background. Now, I'm, I'm Dr. I, Quincy L. Johnson. I was, raised, I was born in Chicago, Illinois, raised in, oh, well, that should be fair, raised on Hardy Plantation near Vicksburg, Mississippi, the earlier years of my life, and then raised in Vicksburg, the latter part. I finished high school. I moved back to the Chicago area, to Maywood. I finished high school at Proviso East, went to the University of Illinois, and then to Roosevelt University for my graduate studies, and my doctoral studies were at Loyola University. And you met Bill. Mm -hmm. Did Did you know of Fred? I knew very little. I knew of the Black Panther movement, but I did not know in depth about the movement until such time as I moved back here. And because Mm -hmm. there there was a, how how can I put it that'll make sense to you? There was an undercurrent among among those who, who were afraid of what the Panthers, what they thought the Panthers represented. There was an undercurrent of individuals who were really afraid to talk about Fred or associate with Bill or any of that. Now, once you found out, if you ever took the time out to read the book Black Power by Stokely Carmichael and Charles Lee Hamilton, if you ever read the book and then understand what they were doing and attempting to do, then all of a sudden you're like, well, wait a minute, what is everybody scared of? That's insane. But, you know, misinformation will lead you there. What you simply had was a movement for human dignity, and, and, and for a very good reason. If you look historically at America, we recently, and I thought he brought it out beautifully. He couldn't say it any better. You had Judge Roy Moore in Alabama running for the Senate. They asked him, what was the best time for the American family? And he said, oh, slavery. Slavery was the best time. Well, wait a minute, Judge. Oh. Hold up. Let's look at this very carefully. Whose family are you talking about? Well, we can figure that out pretty easily. Yes, you had 100% employment for African Americans, but you understand you had 100% employment without any compensation whatsoever. So, you know, now why is this a great time for for other families? Well, if if you're the owner and you're getting free labor, so you have nothing you have to do, well, yeah, that's a great time for your family. So I can see that I can see where he would see it that way, but obviously that's obscene. That's obscenely ridiculous. Well, all the all the Panthers come along and do not unlike what Dr. King is doing, not unlike what Malcolm X is also doing. They come along and say, "Look, we're already men. 
And all we're saying is we want you to acknowledge our manhood, allow us to achieve, get out of the way, let us build our own financial system, and just move away and leave us alone. That's all they were doing. And that's all we're doing today. We're still doing that today. But at the time, again, misinformation, um, the lack of, uh, obviously, press that they could control, that was interpreted as being extraordinarily radical. And in some ways, it was radical because it Mm -hmm. hadn't been done by African Americans collectively before. And I know my son has a lot to say as well, and you may have to tell him he has to press one in order to get on, so. Oh, yes. I, uh, yes, we will yeah. do that. We've got a um, a commercial break coming up in about two minutes. Okay. And okay. Brother Cy is pretty much like myself, sometimes a little long-winded. <laughs> and I mean that in a good way, Cy. <laughs> I mean that in, in a good way. And because he has so much information. And it's exactly. like, I'm I'm scared to... Well, for lack of a better word, I don't want to interrupt him because nine times out of ten, I've learned over a period of time, if I let him talk, the answer to my question will come. So we're going to take like a one-minute early break so that we can get to him because I do not want him to go anywhere. Thank you so much for joining us on Blog Talk Radio, the female solution higher learning with Zelda Speaks. I'm speaking with Dr. Quincy Young, a uh, good family Young. friend of, excuse me, God. of the Hamptons. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, godson, godson. Yes, we're we're all yes. God children of the Hampton there family, of the first family of freedom. We are celebrating the life and the legacy of Chicago's own, even though he was in Maywood, he was all over the place, of yes, our will. beloved brother, Bill Hampton. So you stay close. We will be right back with the one and only Cy Bounds, master blogger, and also friend and godson of Bill Hampton and the Hampton family. You stay close and happy Nurture Yourself Day. We will be right back. Stay close. And thank you for joining us back here on How You're Learning with Zelda Speaks on the Female Solution. Our very special guest today is you, the community, for joining us in this memorial to our brother Bill Hampton of the Hampton Foundation who made his transition this past Thursday. And if you're joining us online at Zelda Speaks, we have a gift for you this morning if you enjoyed the meditation we have for you the Mindfulness Breakthrough System for Easy Steps to Mindfulness that can help you throughout the day. All you have to do is acknowledge it uh, on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram and let us know you in, what you enjoyed about the morning med- meditation and how it can and does and will make a difference in your life and the lives of those who come into your energy and join you on the journey and you can join us on the journey at 515-605-9325 if you'd like to join the conversation and push one so that we'll know that you're there as we go back to the request line and we are speaking with Dr. Quincy Young, godbrother of Bill Hampton and our very own Cy Bounds, master blogger. Good morning, Cy Bounds. Thank you for joining us this morning. Grand rising to you, my brother. Also part of the first family of freedom. Are are you with us, Cy? Uh, um, Can you can you hear me? We can hear you loud and clear. Yes, sir. Thank you for joining okay. us. Okay, fantastic. Well, greetings and uh, just a, just an, a great honor and uh, a real uh, just a wonderful experience uh, uh, getting connected with your energy again. I mean, just uh, incredibly warm uh, delivery, and I mean, I, I'm just it, it took Bill to get us back together. You know, amen. I mean, whatever. It, 
Yeah, but, and, that, and, and that's who Bill was, by the way. Bill, yeah. uh, Bill was Bill was heart. If, if I could just put it in in one word, Bill Hampton was heart, and he he brought people together. You know, so that's uh, you know I, I'm just astounded by by what his life meant, and and uh, I I just wanted to uh, kind of uh, just let let folks know that it's very important uh, to institutionalize Bill's spirit. Uh, now that Bill has passed passed on, it's, it's, it's very important that we institutionalize for our uh, the Bill and, and mother's spirit. It, it should be institutionalized in a, in a very concrete way in Maywood and in Chicago and, and, and throughout the country for our young people, uh, mainly uh, mainly for our young people to know the type of spirit uh, that Bill uh, was, that he, that he brought from the moment that uh, Fred was assassinated. It's just uh, awesome uh, what his life uh, has meant to uh, many people. Zelda? And even though he's not here, as you say it, it took him to bring us together because I haven't talked to you in months. It may be almost a year. And Quincy, too. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, Bill's still on a mission. Yes. He may not be here physically, but his That's presence right. is alive and well. That's you exactly got it. right. That, but now let me just clarify one thing. It's, uh, it's Quincy Johnson. You said young. It's Quincy, Quincy Johnson. Quincy Johnson. Quincy Johnson, thank yeah. you so much for that. <laughs> Fantastic. Yes, ma'am. Now, but, yeah, you were working You were working on a project with Bill before he passed? Oh, wow. Thank you for asking that question. Man, wow. Yeah, about three months ago, uh, uh, I mentioned to Bill, I said, Bill, man, look, you gotta, you got to do something to uh, – to lay this legacy down, man, for when you're not here. And we had no idea that, that Bill would, that this, it would turn out this way. But I said, uh, Bill, uh, I don't care if you just select a room. I don't care if you get uh, pushed back for an institution, building, creating an institution, a museum. I said, keep it simple, but it's going to grow, but you need to create a uh, um, a learning museum for uh, the Hampton legacy. And so it can start from one room and ideally it should be from the park district because that's what Bill is dedicated. Uh, the, the Hampton family has given so much over the years, many years to not only Maywood and to the world, but he did it right from the park district. So I said, that can't be lost. And he said, sigh, you get, uh, there were two other people in the room, uh, Randall McFarlane and William Miller, and, 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 and Bill said, Cy, you handle that. You, you just do whatever you need to do to get that set up. And so I, I, I sketched out uh, that night five, uh, four or five different uh, pages of notes, and, uh, and, and I still have them. And uh, I did a mind map, you know, so I was able to really visualize, uh, and then I you know, I kind of went on my did my research for uh, uh, how to get a museum started, and it's really not a difficult thing. And I was Bill's advisor. Uh, I think I was just I was a close advisor for his technology, and Bill was a very very basic, very non tech. Uh, Bill, was, Bill was about all heart, all heart, and, and strategy and and and, and, and strategic. Uh, he, he brought people together with heart. And of course, that came from Mother Hampton, you know. And but anyway, but I was uh, I, I just assisted Bill with 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 uh, what technology was happening, like 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 I like I did with you, and, and a lot of people. And I just share that information with with Bill, and that's that's what I'm doing now. And uh, the other the flip side of that, Bill and I go back, and Fred go back uh, to the. Early '60s, you know, and uh, to a long time ago when we, uh, I've actually mentored uh, several generations of young men, including Fred and Bill. And so when Fred used to see me in Maywood, you know, we'd be he on the other side of the street. He'd say, "Sit down," you know. So we always had that, and uh, 
uh, as Bill and we. So we always been homeboys, you know. And so it just you know, I I looked at him from that perspective. So and a lot of guys, a lot of guys, women and, and men in Maywood, uh, if you really want to you know the story of of of, uh, of Fred, uh, of Fred, and you know just. It's just really, of course, it was Argo as well, and that's where that's where it's from. But my point is, is that it was just wonderful being a part of. Uh, uh, with Mother Hampton, let me just say this: with Mother Hampton, she was, uh, she was, she was there for for many of us. Uh, she was she was closer as close as any of our families. And in fact, she was family to a lot of people that maybe didn't have families or they weren't as close to their regular families or whatever. But Mother Hampton was, she was there for everybody. As you just said, uh, as you said, I mean, that's, it was just wonderful, a part of that circle because uh, for generations, uh, uh, celebrities included of all types uh, in, in, in our community and, and politicians, they would come to the Hampton home to get to, to get blessed. Uh, it was just it was an unwritten rule that if you're going to run for office, you had to go by and see Mother Hampton. But I know Congressman David is probably going to <laughs> let you know about that one, you know. But yeah, so I mean, you know, and and, and also um, uh, every. For many, I think for over 40 years, Bill and the doctor, let, let Dr. Quincy tell you about this, but Bill, Bill went everywhere, and he had a personal relationship, uh, Shalomas, he had a personal relationship with all, from, from Dick Gregory to Muhammad Ali to, to Chaka Khan and 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 on and on and on and Barack many Obama. many many people Barack throughout. The, but yeah, absolutely, yes, ma'am. So, and, and and he was so and he was just they were just regular. Don't don't get it twisted. They were just they were just regular people, and a lot of people that never knew them may not know that they were just regular folks, man. They, and that was there always, you know. And and it's you know I think. Other people will say it much better than I, but hey, that's my experience. And I was just honored uh, to, uh, to you know, to be a just to be around Mother Hampton and, and Bill. That was that was a great, that was an honor. So volunteering to help was, it was nothing. It was always a great pleasure. But we need to we need to make sure that they were very they loved the Bud Billiken parade and mm-hmm. uh, and. Uh, and, 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 and so we need to understand the, with the institutions that um, that we now must start putting in place uh, to really uh, allow people from around the world to touch and, 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 and that spirit remains, then we need to uh, understand that that's what they loved and, and we bring that to the uh, to the to, to the other generations. So now, actually, uh, our, our schools, our, our young people throughout Chicagoland and throughout Illinois uh, uh, can come to that location uh, as uh, as class projects, and they can do it digitally, and they can do it physically as well. It ties in Harold Lucas's uh, uh, Great Migration product. So it's a big thing, and we, we, we it, it, it must it must it should move forward naturally. Uh, with those things in mind, and, and that would strengthen, that would that would add a big, uh, it would really strengthen what we're trying to do to reach our young people. It would be one step in the right direction. And I know if you are in at the forefront of that, that it will happen because you are the kind of person that makes things happen. So you too, my brother, are part of the first family of wow. freedom. So thank Incredible. you for continuing the work of the family, the 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 Hampton family, because as you said, uh, everybody in anybody, I just 
I loved it was like, for lack of a better word, a family holiday whenever we were at the Hampton family home in Maywood because you would see you would see anybody and everybody. You'd walk in the door and I'm like, Wow, whoa, they're here? Oh, okay, wow. This is this is real family. Yeah. I, I, I just remember the I just remember with you with the, the the last time we saw we saw Mother Hampton, we were together, you and, and, and Tony and and it was just it was just a, a great moment. Tony was, I remember you guys, Tony putting on his leather, told you guys to get ready to leave, and it took 20 minutes just to leave, you know. <laughs> she didn't want to leave Mother Hampton's <laughs> presence, you know. And, and she loved you guys. And she had a, she had that wink, yeah. wink. She always had that glint in her eye, didn't she? Did she? Yes, she was just yes, a, a, yeah, yes. she had that glint in her eye. She was, she was so, oh so as God. you say, they, they would a, they, it, it's, it's incredibly, it's incredibly important that we uh, the tributes are the tributes are fine, they're fine, but the the inst- we must in- institutionalize physically uh, uh, and uh, uh, digitally the spirit of the Hampton legacy. We will do that, and Dr. Quincy. And excuse me, Dr. Quincy, for not knowing your last name, because I always just knew you as Dr. Quincy. I didn't even know your last name, which is irrelevant <laughs> to, to me, because I know Dr. Quincy. I call Dr. Q. That's all I need, though. Yes, um, yes, yes, yes. I, I, I thank you all for being at the forefront of this and handling the continuation of this leg- legacy of the first family of freedom, Dr. Quincy, handling... The uh, the funeral arrangements with the family and Cy, you mm-hmm. making this a digital project for the future leaders of yes. the world Thank to you. Yes, continue yes. this legacy and anything that I can do in and out of the way, just let me know. I am here and we will continue to broadcast well, this information via the Female Solution as well as the Higher Learning Network and in our newsletter of information and inspiration, and anybody who wants more information on this to keep up with the progress of not only the funeral, but the upcoming uh, event that Cy and, and Dr. Quincy are working on, please that, send us an email. Go to zeldaspeaks.com, and we will keep you informed, and just send us your email address, and we, we'll, we'll include you. We'll have you in the loop, so to speak. You were so about I'm to say something. I wanna, yes, sir. Yes, yeah. I, I just wanted to say that uh, I'm I'm incredibly impressed with the with the job that Dr. Quincy is doing, uh, and, and with the funeral arrangements, you know. So, but I'm also I also want to say that uh, I I'm so glad to reconnect with you. I will be uh, you know continuing to to listen to your show. I mean, and, and then the meditation piece that you do. I mean. It is so wonderful what you bring in. I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm glad we reconnected again. So thank you so much for being who you are, uh, and to Chicago, so and, and to the Hampton family as well. So just hey, you know, and I'm, I'm not trying to represent the Hampton family. I'm basically just, I'm just trying to help uh, and uh, do what I did when I, when Bill was around. Bill said, "Hey, Sack, come over, give me a hand," and and that, that's all I'm trying to do today. Uh, you know, um, that you know, that's basically it. But yeah, it, it's a pleasure just just helping out with with such a great family and and the young people in that family, in the Hampton family, have a great future. To just take their time and and get ready to uh, uh, participate and and make this legacy uh, work for them. Uh, and for yes, the, and the we community. have to help them. We have to help That's them. Exactly it, right. That is our mission as elders to steer them to in yes, the ma'am. right direction. That's wonderful, wonderful. This is such a great, great uh, conversation and a great moment. So thank you so much. And thank you for for participating. And Bill was doing just that. He, you know, he never took time for himself because he was always making sure that injustices yeah. were being yes. corrected. That's mm-hmm. one of the reasons why Bill never had children. He was too, his the community was his children. Absolutely. He could always he could always tell you, uh, and, I'm, and I'm gonna let Doc talk now. I know you got to go, but he, Bill could always uh, tell you about 
why he was doing what he did, and yes. uh, it, just he was just a brilliant man, you know, he, earth man, and you might want it to move a little faster. Bill say, no, 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 just let's let's do it. Like yeah, this. You know? yeah, I loved that about him. Yeah. He was never in a hurry yeah. for anything. Yeah, no, 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 very special. Uh, all heart, With all heart. Yes. And I and I yes. love the fact that he was so family orientated. If if you walked into the house and you were a newbie, you had never been to the family. Yes. Uh, a family gathering. You were made to feel so welcome. Mother yep. Hampton, the first thing out of yep. her mouth, girl, get get you a plate. Go over there and wash your hands and get you a plate. Sit down and have some food. <laughs> you know, like Mother did would do. Yes. 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 You felt yes. at home. You didn't yes. feel like, you know, these people on this side of the room were the superstars and these people on this side yeah. of the room oh, were the ordinarily people. Yeah. It's like yeah. everybody oh. was family. There was no separation, and we were all there for the greater cause of the people to bring so joy and people. bring cohesiveness. So many great people came through, didn't they, Doc? Dr. Dr. Clinton? Absolutely. Absolutely. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Absolutely. It was an amazing experience. I'm always reminded that an army cannot run on an empty stomach. And Mm. Mom and Dee Dee made sure that you did not have an empty stomach when you left that house. Lord have mercy. Sweet potato pie. Can somebody help me, please? Pound cake, black eyed peas, macaroni and cheese. (laughs) Chicken and dressing, ham, pork chops, steak, Salisbury steak, the list oh, goes on. Oh, spaghetti. Oh, my God. I miss those meals. I, I can't know. eat those had, meals anymore, but I surely miss them. <laughs> See, I've had many battles trying to protect the banana pudding from all you hungry folk who would show up there. <laughs> it got ugly sometimes. I know. And, and uh, one of the things, I, a couple of things I do want to point out to, the, to you and to your audience, one, uh, isn't it amazing that Bill chooses to die in Black History Month? Okay. I mean, that, 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 can you plan that any better if you're going to do it? You know what I mean? Not that I wanted right. to lose him, of course. And then secondly, right. um, none of my all-time fictional characters were create, was created, uh, interestingly enough, by two men who happen not to be Black, and that's Jack Kirby and um, Stan Lee. They create sure. uh, T'Challa, the Black Panther, that movie, is in one week. And again, I just find that fascinating that these things would take place in such a manner. And when you see this movie done by black director Ryan Coogler, when you see it, you'll see why it's so phenomenal, uh, the whole concept and the image of what they do. Now, there's always been an argument as to whether they created the character first and the Panthers were named after them or sure. the Panthers came and they were named because it all happens in the same year in 1966. There's mm-hmm. no way to know, or perhaps just two brilliant men came up with the same concept at the same time. That's happened before also. So no mm-hmm. one will ever know, and it doesn't matter. But the point is, I just find it amazing that Bill would pick this month of all months mm-hmm. to make his transition. Mm-hmm. Well, Bill said, I have done my work. I have done what I needed to do. God called his number. It is his time. He has uh-huh. done his share of the work, and he has left. He has passed the ball. He has passed the baton. Absolutely. And now yes. it is up to those who believe in the first family of freedom and continuing the mm-hmm. legacy. It's up to us to move forward. That so it's on our good. shoulders. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And, and there was a tremendous, tremendous work done. The, I, I've gotten calls from Bill in the middle of the night. Uh, I'm at Wichita State. Uh, I'm in California. Uh, there, we're doing a lecture on, on the book, The Assassination of Fred Hampton. There might be, and by the way, it's been optioned for a movie. And so we'll, well, obviously you'll be getting more information about that as more information about that comes up. I'm delighted. And Jeff Haas, we had the honor of having Cy was in the room, Bill was in the room. We had Jeff out, Haas out for our Meet the Author series for our organization, The Initiative. And he came in, and he was almost, it was kind of cool, he was almost world-weary from trying to tell the story. But I had told the brothers and sisters, I said, here's the deal. 
We're going to read the book before he shows up. So Jeff came in and he says, has anyone read the book? And everybody's hand went up. His whole demeanor changed. He's like, oh, my God. He said, well, we don't have to tell the story. You already know the story. Let's Hello? start the conversation from there. We had an amazing time. But that book should be, should be required reading for every school child in America, unavoidably so. Much like they need to read Dr. King's Why We Can't Wait and uh, the Autobiography of Malcolm X. Those are just books that ought to be required reading, period. And I agree. And Asai, I think that needs to be part of the curriculum as well when starting this wow. project for the youth. Yes. A- absolutely. Yes, yes. Wow, that's, man, awesome. I got it. I got it. <laughs> I got it. Yeah, I, I'm kicking it all in. Yes, ma'am. Wow. Okay. Well, yeah, I, I want to thank quiet. You guys, yeah. Uh, you, you said I was going to, hey, you know what? Those days are gone. But one of the things it, that uh, I, I don't just talk on and on and on, but one of the things that I wanted to share that uh, my goal now is to reach back to the, the brothers and sisters, uh, really mostly on the west side, uh, some on the south side some on the north side and, you know, and, and then Maywood suburban area. But I want to reach back to the people that I, we really touched our lives in the last 20 years because I need them to really understand where technology is now and where it's going. And I have to have that conversation with, with them to now because a lot of people are trying to figure it out. And as you know, I, I try and stay uh, about six months and hopefully more uh, ahead. Uh, and so that conversation needs to take place. Families now need to begin to uh, stick together and become groups, run their families sort of like businesses, uh, and find out where their resources are using technology. And so that's a conversation that I want to have with the people who they kind of need to get back to me again. Uh, but I, but I just wanted to share that one thing that I didn't know was going to happen, Shalom, and I wanted to say this was that uh, I didn't know that my, my Agent Orange and the PTSD would kick in. So I'm not as, uh, you know, I, I'm just not as forthgoing as I as I would like to be uh, mm-hmm. because uh, it, it just happened. I, I told uh, my good friend, Dr. Frank uh, Urasek, I told him years ago, uh, about five years ago, I said, Doc, I can feel myself alienating and pulling back. He says, don't let it happen, Sai, you know. But mm-hmm. it's very it's mm-hmm. very difficult uh, when, when you're a Vietnam vet. I, I never thought it would happen, but I fight that. That said, I still just try and keep pushing and, 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 and get get the words out, you know, that, that what I just mentioned to you. So, But that's mm-hmm. where I'm at right now, that, you know, so. Well, thank you so much for sharing that information with uh, not only us, but our listeners as well, because we had no idea, and we do. My brother was a Vietnam vet, so and my uncle and other relatives, so I understand what you're going through. And so now that I have your contact information, you can pull all you want, but Dr. Quincy and I are going to pull you out of it. <laughs> so you just, you just yeah. keep wow. on pulling away, and we're just going to keep on pulling you back. Pulling and right now we're going to pull Nobody back for a commercial break. break. <laughs> but right now we're going to pull back. Dr. Quincy, do you have to leave? I do not. I am staying with you to the end of this broadcast, and you should have a number of callers calling in shortly. Yes, we do, we're and they are patiently waiting. So we're gonna we're gonna take a commercial break, and we're on. gonna be right back. Uh, we don't. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. We do have uh, Minister Plump on the line, who would like right. to speak. So let's take this commercial break right quick, and we will be right back. Thank you so much for joining us on Blog Talk Radio, the Female Solution. Higher Learning with Zelda speaks. In memorial to Brother Fred Hampton, excuse me, uh, Fred Hampton's brother, Brother Bill Hampton, uh, mm-hmm. from the First Family of Freedom, and we will be right back. So please stay close and thank you for listening. At Blog Talk Radio, the Female Solution. Higher Learning with Zelda Space with my special guest today, Dr. Quincy Johnson. 
and Cy Bounds, master blogger, in memorial to Brother Fred. I keep saying Fred, Fred, I know your spirit is alive and well because you work through Bill. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. In memorial to the, in memorial to the, to, to the Hampton family, Brother uh, Bill Hampton, who continues the legacy of his brother of the Black Panther Party. Fred Hampton. And the request lines are open at 515-605-9325. And I, please forgive me, I forgot to uh, mention to to um, give away the uh, gift for today, the Four Steps to Easy Mindfulness, the Mindfulness Breakthrough System. All you have to do is hit me up on Facebook at Zelda Speaks or Twitter. The choice is yours. But right now we're going to the phone line. Minister Plump, thank you so much for joining us, Robert Plump, this morning on The Female Solution. We are in your shalom, or hua. We don't <laughs> die, we multiply like power forever. Our shalom alaykum, shalom. Good morning, <laughs> beloved. <laughs> Hallelujah, yes. Yes, uh, I would, uh, I go back 50 plus years with the Hampton family. You know, we he sure we does. don't miss all of them, you know. Uh, Bill was uh, our grand marshal for the last uh, two years, the grand marshal of the Harold Washington Foundation, uh, for more information, dot org. Uh, we uh, always uh, look for Bill to be a part in participating, him and mother of uh, Hampton, she really looked just like my mother. We we all call her my dear. <laughs> sure did. Yeah. 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 I want to make sure that uh, Dr. Quincy, I get uh, you know your number direct, and I uh, got to get all of the funeral directions, uh, you know, information. And Zelda, yeah. I do need your number again. I know I got it. I'm just uh, at this point, you know. Uh, kind of outdone, but still, you know, I would say that uh, the spirit of the Hampton family is truly black power forever, you know, from the roots of Mississippi, and back in the day, we started out with, uh, you know, Snick, uh, Kwame Mm Tui, known as Stokely Carmichael, so then we migrated on up here, you know what I mean, and so we kept it going on with with the whole Hampton family. So I'm just thankful that I'm still in the land of the living to keep on promoting uh, black power forever. So Dr. Quincy and Sister uh, Queen uh, Zelda, just give me your information or give us your information again, and we're going to keep it going. Praise the Lord. Y'all Praise the Lord. Thank you. And Hallelujah. thank you. Let me just say that you have, through the years, been a rock, not only for the Hamptons, but for so many with the Harold Washington Foundation and all the other work you do and for all that. Well, God bless your heart. We love you, too, for all that. We love the struggle. We love the movement. And we love the coalitions, you know, that the Honorable Mm -hmm. Mayor Harold Washington Birthday is April 15th coming up. Mm-hmm. So uh, for right. more information, and, and we're going to post that on uh, the Hell Washington uh, Foundation.org in terms of the funeral information and right. uh, how we can keep in touch with you too, Dr. Uh, Quincy and, and Zelda. You know, we need you. No doubt, as they say, I got that from Chairman Fred Hampton Jr., no doubt. And I also got uh, We Don't Die. We multiply. So black power is forever <laughs> living with us. And I love the whole Hampton family. And, and Chairman Fred Hampton Jr. is one of my godsons, and I love him too in the whole family. So y'all be blessed and success breeds success. Amen. Keep up the good work. Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We appreciate, we appreciate you and we appreciate the work that you continue to do in the community as bringing 
our people together to know that this is a fight of all people because there is uh, a system in place to keep us divided. But there okay. are the forerunners, such as Bill Hampton and the the Hampton family and people who are on this call and listening to this call who have intentions to make this world a better place to live for everyone, not just for uh, the, the 1%. But for the 99% Mm -hmm. who Mm -hmm. make this Mm -hmm. country what it is today. Mm -hmm. So we thank you. We thank you for being a part of this movement because we're married to the movement whether we know it or not, whether we have children or not. We're still married to the movement. As long Mm -hmm. as we're breathing, as long as we have breath. I hope you enjoyed the breathing exercise this morning because there's no life without breath. I hope you continue to do and be and have and think what the breath that is in you is destined to do because Mm -hmm. that breath is there for a reason. Bill's breath is no longer on the physical plane because he's done his work here. That's right. He's on elsewhere to do work. And my wish is that when I'm no longer here, that someone will say something nice about me, that I made a difference in the quality of somebody's of life. And I, I think of we course. all want that, do we not? Absolutely. <clears throat> Absolutely. And I think the fact that I have two powerful brothers online with me, Dr. Quincy Johnson and Cy, who's trying to duck out. No, we ain't having that. We're not having that. <laughs> We're not having it. <laughs> you, you, you still got too much information to share. You know, if, if Tony and I need to come by there and get you and bring you down to the yeah. studio and have lunch and have a chat and and share yeah. some more of that knowledge, because you got too much knowledge to keep it to yourself, Shad. Yes, Cy. Yes, ma'am. You got way too much. And our children need you. Our children are hungry. Our children are thirsty. They're not out here acting out. They're looking. They're seeking. Mm -hmm. Yes, Mm -hmm. ma'am. And and by the way, one one of the great secrets of my life is if I'm doing a show, I would call Bill and Cy and take them with me. And then mm-hmm. I told somebody, all I have to do is sit there and look dignified. The brothers are so brilliant. <laughs> I didn't have to do anything. It, it, it's the greatest thing in history. And um, Brother Edward Brown is another one of those brothers, and hopefully he'll get a chance to call you as well. I know he's going to wow. try. But th- he's another of those brothers. Those brothers are so brilliant. When I'm in a room with them, all I got to do is just not fall off my chair, and I got it made. I got it made. That's all he's <laughs> Uh, Just sit there and nod yeah. and look intelligent, right? There you go. At least pretend to be intelligent. That's that's all. That's what I'm working with. Uh, and as a matter of fact, mm-hmm. go go ahead, Sai. No, no, no. Uh, Bill was really the uh, the as I said. Bill Bill never forgot anything. I mean, nothing. He could go back uh, 50 years when we were Absolutely. kids, and you know, I mean. Just being around uh, the brilliance of Bill, you know, it, it was it was so just uh, funny because Bill, Bill was not about this technology thing. His mind was like technology. That's what his mind. He was a technologist. Yes. You know, you know what, what, what he reminded you of is there are stories because African languages and histories were actually oral long before anything was written down. Yeah, you know, the hey, reason they were oral. The reason they were oral is because they didn't have to write them down. They had certain teachers, griots and the like, that they could yes. go to. And they would tell you the last 18 generations of your family and everybody that was a member of your family. It was done mentally. Well, that was what Bill's gift reminded you of. Zelda, I could call Bill if, if he were alive at this moment and say, can you give me Zelda's phone number? He wouldn't look on a pad. He would just go, yeah, her number is blah, blah, blah. You can <laughs> yeah, her right. this. And he literally would do that. Yeah. With if, I, if I asked him 100 people and 100 individuals' contact information, he literally would ravel that off to you. And it yes. was an amazing thing to watch. I'm, I, I'm I would, walking I would, and I would, talking I would encyclopedia. Love, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I would love to see uh, once uh, whatever institution that, that – that, uh, 
the, the movement decides to, uh, the people that can make it happen. But uh, whatever institution is, is, is settled upon, I would hope then that uh, the many, many brothers and sisters that are still among us would come and 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 through lectures because it's a le- it would be a learning museum, Hampton Legacy Learning Museum would come and and share their remembrances of Bill and Fred and and see that's what that's what I young people in our uh, su- uh, succeeding generations need and 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 that's what I would love to see happen. Extraordinary right. idea, Scott. Extraordinary yes, yes. idea. With, with people like yourself, Doctor uh, mm-hmm. Johnson and Brownlee, there are a lot of people in, in, in the Argo and Maywood area, and and and, and on the West Side, uh, yeah. who uh, uh, have some just incredible stories of of Bill, and I, of course I South Side as well. But I'm I'm just saying, I, I being around Bill, I know that. You know all of these stories, or you know, that people have, and so, and, and that's history. Okay, mm-hmm. that's history, and that's history. We're uh, we're beginning to really understand. And I I, I kind of like been aware of this, you know, for quite a while, for years. But we're just beginning to understand how important it, uh, our stories from the 1950s and the 60s are in a personal way that that's should it. be should be a part of the conversation so our young people will really understand how we used to roll with each other, how we used to treat each other. Absolutely. Uh, we, uh, the world's going to improve. We, we're going to mm-hmm. go through some, some, some tough times, but ultimately the world's going to improve, and we want we want to be there and ready and our young people uh, to be a part of the thriving uh, world that we're going to have uh that's going to come. It's going to be some difficult times, but that that's going to come uh, because the technology actually uh, used properly is is making the world a better place. And we just got to really, really, uh, human beings have just really got to really, and, and there are a lot of people working to make it happen. A lot of people working against it, but there's a lot of people working to make it happen. That's I, right. think, I think we're going to come out on top. I, I, I'm reminded uh, Dr. King once was quoted as saying, the arc of the universe may be long, but it bends toward justice. I agree. The world is going to get better, and it ultimately does move forward and get better. Our people earn more now than we ever did. It has nothing to do with the current administration, although they think it does in the White House, but we do earn more as a people. We do now have to look forward. I think one of the major thrusts in the future has to be an economic thrust, And also, we're going to have to reestablish ties with the African continent in a much stronger manner than we have. The resources are there. There are a number of individuals there that need knowledge that many African Americans have, and many of the resources we need, they have. So I think as you begin to look at that, and then it goes even farther than that to simply a worldwide economy. Those are things that are going to happen the question is going to be, as you put it so well before, Ty, are we going to be a part of that? Or are we, one, once again, going to be on the outside looking in? My well, thing is to be we're going to be a part of that. We have to be a part of that, not only that conversation, the actions that lead to that worldwide economy. We have to be a part of it, unavoidably. Yeah, I, I, I definitely am not I, – I really don't feel qualified to really uh, – that, that level of, of – but uh, but for me, I, I I don't I really don't think we are I don't think we we're even close to to to, to getting to, to getting what we uh, I don't think in any way that the, other than the passage of time uh, mm-hmm. uh, that, that we that we're getting what we what we deserve you know mm-hmm. uh, uh, you, you know but but, but uh, as I said before regardless of all that things are going to uh, we see that conversation is because of a lot of young people now. That mm-hmm. conversation is, is 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 going to be a better conversation because they're not taking what we took, right? So, <laughs> so, 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 so that that that's going to be a better conversation. But it, but as far as I'm concerned, uh, the, it's the technology uh, is, is is my uh, sort of specialty. And from mm-hmm. what I'm seeing, from what I'm seeing, it, it's so many opportunities which I will uh, 
the, the people that I that I will get in touch with uh, on the project that I'm working on now, uh, and I put it all on one page. But I think there are certain things that our community is thinking about, and and because the the applications and the opportunities in this technology, are, these things are emerging that we need to be a part of, and mm-hmm. that's that's that's. I mean, we need to we need the conversations need to need to focus on on a number of areas at once, but we could say maybe let's just say without so people don't get confused. Let's just say let's just pick ten areas, and then mm-hmm. we will work on those ten areas, and that's what I'll be doing with folks. Uh, a couple of those areas, just off the top, would be uh, 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 we we need to focus on non uh, uh, non robotic on robotic proof jobs. The other thing we need to be focusing on side hustles. So mm-hmm. my interest is in uh, employment for young people, uh, skill development for young people uh, where they can earn without having to sell drugs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and so, so that's what, that's what my interest is. And uh, uh, that's what my main Thank interest you. is the technology. Thank you so you know. much. For sharing that, we've got about uh, another two or three minutes, and we've got one more call that we need to take. Thank you so much, Rashida mm-hmm. Ali on line uh, six three zero three. Good morning, Sister Rashida. Grand rising to you. Good morning, Grand rising also to you. Uh, I was wondering, um, the brother, did he speak about uh, expanding um, a children museum? Because I came in on the last part, but if if he's uh, thinking about expanding the children's museum uh, on the south side of Chicago, we have a children's museum, and you rarely see people uh, attending it. So um, I think it would be a nice development project if we could uh, extend what they have there um, for uh, the participation and involvement of, of the youth in the community. Um, uh, Fortunately, it's on 95th and uh, I think it's 95th and Richland somewhere. Well, it's on 95th mm-hmm. Street uh, that they have a children's life museum, and you okay. rarely see people attending it. I seldom do you see any events going on. So to expand that, I, I think someone should look into that, and if needed to do any research, I'll be willing to help. That's a great suggestion. Yeah. That's a great suggestion. You, um, if if you could through Zelda get the exact information for the museum, I think the way to start is with that administration, find out what they're doing, and then find out how we can augment that. I see no reason that we can't try. We could try and do something through that. Well, that's again, that that's out of my. I'm not, you know, I, my interest was was. was uh, was was uh, the Hampton legacy? Hopefully, at, at that at that moves forward, because uh, I'm yeah. just putting that out there, legacy museum. But now, I, and, and I, I don't know where that came from. The, the children, because I wasn't talking about the the children's museum, but I think that's the Bronzeville Children's Museum. I think with mm-hmm. Sherry, I forget Sherry's last name, but yeah, which, which is an awesome museum. I think she, I thought she might have moved that. Uh, no, this to, is a, uh, a brand new. It's brand new. Um, okay. It was built built from the ground. Dorothy Tillman had something to do with the development of it, but it's just sitting there with with without uh, you know a lot of uh, children participation, and uh, okay. it's only well, when they have like special events is it really rarely known that anyone visits that institution. Let 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 let, let, let me comment on that. Even though this is kind of off the topic, but. Uh, you deal in our community needs to uh, actually this is a very important uh and it helps everybody in our community so this so this is a worthy conversation uh, mm-hmm. uh but our communities need to move to the level of digital our libraries the, the museums in the in black america uh whether it's in the suburbs or whether it's in the city uh from size perspective and my research tells me that our museums are, are behind when it comes to technology, because really, 
uh, the people should be able to visit the museum online now. And our communities haven't picked that up and, uh, and haven't figured that out. So mm-hmm. that, that's, that's really what should be happening. And, and, and then there's a, and that, you know, I tried to, you know, get that, that conversation out, but sometimes the museums are politically or whatever reason, uh, people they they want to continue doing this the way they want to do it and they so i'm i'm uh i'm almost a little tired of that fight right there i, I just let it happen as it happens but um well thank but, you yeah. so much for um yeah. for sharing that information sister rashida we yes, will continue ma'am. this Absolutely. conversation at another time because time is up we thank our guest today Dr. Quincy Johnson, Side Bounds, master blogger, who has come out from under the woodwork, and we're going to keep him out from under the woodwork. Got that right. As we continue with this, we will keep you, our listening audience, abreast of the funeral arrangements for Brother Bill Hampton. And if you want more information, you can't get it soon enough, you can always go to our social media page, Zelda Speaks, on Facebook, as well as Twitter and Instagram, and on the Female Solution Facebook. Thank you. We will join you again next Monday, hopefully with Brother Rafiq Hikai, the digital doctor who was not with us today due to the passing of Brother Bill Hampton. Stay on purpose, stay empowered, and please remember to do something special for yourself because you deserve it. It's as simple as that. Thank you, Dr. Quincy. Thank you, Sai. And I will talk with you both shortly. It was an honor. Yes, it is. Thank you so much. God bless you, Bill Hampton. We love you and we miss you. We'll continue the legacy. Stay on purpose. Stay empowered. Stay tuned to your next session of Higher Learning with Zelda Speaks. And thanks for listening. 